Hi everyone, uh, this is Yi Hui Xie. Sorry that I can't attend the RStudio conference in person this year, but I guess you won't miss anything from this talk with my absence. Well, if you really miss my face, you can simply Google for my picture and stare at it for 20 minutes along with this talk. So there are people uh, who are really familiar with my talk and uh, my previous talks and work on the so-called down packages they are so familiar that every time they meet me they don't greet me with the usual what's up instead they say what's down well this time i'm not going to talk about any down packages i won't let you down as usual um so what's down nothing is down what's up Quarto is up. Um, so most down packages have had or will have equivalents in Quarto, which you might have heard for several times at this conference. And I need to, I probably should clarify that the down packages won't be down anytime soon. We will continue to maintain them. So why am I talking about Niter today? Because the Niter package is a common cornerstone of Quarto and R Markdown. So both of them are built on top of Niter. So you can apply what you have learned today about Niter in this talk to both Quarto and R Markdown documents. So Niter has existed for a little over 10 years. So the development started in 2011 and I made the first crane release uh, in January 2012. Over these years, I have made more than 50 crane releases and there have been more than uh, 5,000 questions on Stack Overflow and more than 2,000 GitHub issues and pull requests. I, I would also like to thank all the uh, Niter contributors and there are more than 100 of them. Since the pandemic, I have almost lost track of time. So basically I want to look back and see what I have done uh, in the past two years, whether I have done anything uh, meaningful. So as I said, Niter is uh, over 10 years old, so it has become quite mature and probably inevitably boring as time goes by. You know, when things become mature, they often become boring too, just like adults, you know. The kids are much more fun. Yeah, for software, uh, being mature is not bad. It's actually a good thing. In this talk, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about any like totally exciting new features, because there are not any huge new features in recent years in the, in the development of Niter. But I, I would like to highlight a, a few little things. So for a full list of changes and new features, you can check out the release notes of Niter later. So the first thing I want to highlight is that now you have a new way to write chunk options. Previously, you must write all chunk options on one line in the chunk header. But now you can write them uh, on multiple lines as special comments in the beginning of the chunk body. So these special comments start with uh, the hash character followed by the pipe character. I'm not sure how would you pronounce uh, this combination. Maybe hash pipe? I remember someone mentioned me that uh, hash pipe was uh, a funny coincidence. Uh, since I'm not a native English speaker, I had no idea what hash pipe means. So I googled for that and I regret it. Anyway, hash pipe comments, you can use that to right chunk options. So as I said, previously you have to force all the chunk options onto a single line, which is sometimes very awkward if you have many, many uh, chunk options for a single chunk. There will be an awkward uh, horizontal screw bar. But now you can write uh, all of your chunk options can write with your chunk body. You can put them inside the chunk after the special comments. And you can also uh, hard wrap all these lines freely. You can, you can write them on any number of lines. So for example, you can 
put one chunk option on one line or you can like break a single chunk option in the middle you can wrap them in any way you like and alternatively uh, you can also use the YAML syntax to provide your chunk options so previously I'm showing the old syntax of comma separated chunk options of the form option equals value and separated by commas if you are familiar with YAML you know that syntax will be uh, option colon followed by value and you have to write one option per line um, for Quarto in RStudio or VS Code users I strongly recommend that you use the uh, YAML syntax because the editors RStudio and VS Code they have better support for the YAML options for example you, they can help you out complete the option names they can validate the values of your uh, options and second the YAML syntax works uh, for other engines in Quarto as well such as uh, Jupyter so if you want to convert from uh, convert the old syntax to the new syntax there is a function named uh, convert chunk header in Knitter so you can use that uh, function to convert your old uh, R Markdown documents to, to using the new syntax for chunk options but this requires a very recent version of Knitter and the second uh, thing I want to talk about is how to reuse uh, chunk both chunk options and chunk content from other code chunks so previously there existed uh, several ways to reuse the content of a code chunk for example through the uh, ref.label option so suppose you have uh, one code chunk with the label chunk A and then you can write another code chunk with the label chunk B but set the chunk option ref.label equals chunk A and ref.label equals chunk A that means I want to cop, uh, uh, copy the chunk content of chunk A into chunk B so now you, although you see the chunk B is empty here but when you execute the uh, this document um, chunk B will have the same content as chunk A you can learn more about uh, reusing the chunk content in the R Markdown cookbook so now um, in addition to reusing the content of code chunks you can also reuse chunk options from other code chunks and this can be done through the uh, chunk option ops.label so for example you have chunk A here and you have set a couple of chunk options on chunk A and if you want to use the same chunk options in chunk B then you simply need you simply can set ops.label equals chunk A so instead of repeating all the chunk options from chunk A you simply set a single option ops.label equals chunk A and then chunk B will use the same chunk options as chunk A then if you want to reuse um, both chunk options and the content from other code chunks you can you can uh, set the chunk option ref.label to the label of other code chunks and then wrap the labels in the function i for example here i have chunk a which has a few chunk options and then it also has some chunk content and then in chunk B I set ref.label equals I chunk A that means I want to use both the content of chunk A and the chunk options of chunk A so in that way you don't have to repeat everything from chunk A you simply set a single option and Knitter will copy everything to the uh, next uh, to, to chunk B so I also want to share two quick tips first uh, the chunk options ref.label and ops.label can uh, take a vector of chunk labels that means you can reuse a multiple code chunks instead of a single one and second you can provide further local chunk options if you if a code chunk ha has some local chunk options they will override the reused options of the same names so in the in this example 
chunk B is basically reusing both chunk options and the chunk content of chunk A, but it has set a, a local chunk option dev equals PNG. So since we have borrowed all the chunk options from chunk A, which uh, includes the chunk option dev equals SVG, so now chunk B, since chunk B has a local uh, chunk option dev equals PNG, this dev equals PNG will override uh, the dev equals SVG from chunk A. So basically, local chunk options will have higher priorities if you reuse uh, chunk options from other code chunks. Third thing I want to mention is some uh, the new chunk options in Knitter in recent years. We have added uh, a few of them, and, but today I'm just going to mention one of them here, which is the file option. So sometimes you, might, you may want to develop code uh, in, in an external script and include it in a code chunk. Previously, what you could do is to use the chunk option code. So for example, here I'm using the chunk option code that takes the value from read lines uh, script.r. So that basically means that I want to read an external script and pass the content of that script to the code option. And then Nitter knows, OK, I will use the content of that script as the content of this code chunk. That, that's the previous way of uh, including external scripts into a code chunk. Now, this can be simplified to uh, the chunk option file. So you can set file equals a file path, for example, script.r. So basically, that's equivalent to using code equals read lines uh, script.r before. And this file option also supports a vector of file paths. For example, we can pass uh, two scripts to the file option, and the file option will read uh, both of them into the code chunk. The fourth thing I want to uh, highlight is uh, some new engines in Knitter. The first one is the comment engine. So you can use the comment engine to comment out any content. And the content can contain basically anything, including code chunks or, uh, or inline R expressions or other paragraphs or anything. So basically, uh, there's one rule that you have to remember. So if the comment contains uh, like three backticks, and then for the comment engine, you have to start with four backticks. So basically, the rule is that if your if your comment contains n backticks, then the comment engine needs to start with n plus one backticks. So one if the content is commented out, it will it it will not be included in the output. And the the second engine is the a verbatim engine and this can be very useful when you want to uh, write tutorials on R Markdown so and and you may want to display some content verbatim especially the code chunks so when you want to display a code chunk verbatim you can use the verb verbatim engine and the rule is the same so for example here I'm including a code chunk with three backticks and then the verbatim engine needs to start with four backticks. For the verbatim engine, depending on the content of the, uh, depending on the language of the content, you can you can set a syntax highlighting language through the uh, chunk option lang. So, for example, here I'm using lang equals markdown. That means okay, the verbatim content here is markdown code. But this uh, lang, op uh, lang option is uh, optional, so it depends on whether you want syntax highlighting in your output for the ver verbatim content. Um, previously, I have introduced some old uh, ugly hacks on how to uh, show content verbatim, and now you can forget all of them. Uh, and here, um, I just yeah, I, I don't want to explain this anymore. This is just uh, too ugly. Use the verbatim engine and forget about the old ugly hacks. 
The third engine that I want to show is the embed engine. You can use it's the you can use the embed engine to uh, embed external files, um, text files actually. You can embed external text files and display their content verbatim. So this is similar to the verbatim engine, but you can use the file option to uh, embed external files. So you don't have to write the content in the in the chunk body. You just point the file option to some file paths. And alternatively, you can write file paths in the chunk body of the uh, embed engine. For example, you can write quote foo.r, quote uh, bar.r. So uh, the second way has a tiny advantage. That is, uh, if you write in the chunk body, if you write the file paths in the chunk body, your editor, for example, RStudio, may be able to outcomplete the file paths. The last engine that I want to uh, show here is the exec engine. So this engine uh, allows you to execute an arbitrary system command on a file that contains the content of the chunk. So that command can be specified through the chunk option command. So for example, I have an exec uh, engine uh, here and I'm using the command equals bash. That means I want to run the command bash on uh, the, the, the command that I specify in the chunk body. So basically when, when Nitter sees uh, an exec chunk, it will write the chunk body into a file and execute a command on that file. So for this bash example, Actually, you don't have to use the exec engine. You can simply use the existing bash engine in Nitter. So these two, these two code chunks are pretty much equivalent. There uh, have existed a lot of command-based engines in Nitter. For example, awk or go or Perl or Z shell. And from now on, we no longer need to add a new engine for every single command. You can basically use the exec engine to execute any command. And by the way, the exec engine is also extensible. So you can, if you're interested, you can go back and check out the examples, the example on uh, the link, uh, through the link here. So for those who are curious about how the exec engine works, so basically, uh, uh, Nitro will execute uh, a command of the form command args1, args2, arg, uh, sorry, command args1, args, then args2, where args is a file path. And this file contains the content of the code chunk. And args1 and args2 are optional command line arguments that you, might, you may specify through the chunk option engine.ops. So here I have an example that executes the grep uh, command uh, with a few uh, command line arguments dash i and which means case insensitive matching and then the pattern is h, -H e and i want to execute grep on the four lines of text here so you know h e will if you match h e in case insensitivity it will match the first line hellos in the third line, since it has the, which contains he. And just a quick recap, we have uh, talked about four things in today's talk. First thing is that you can use hash pipe comments in the chunk body to write chunk options. You can, then you can use ops.label and ref.label options to reuse both uh, chunk options and content. And third, you can use the file option to read external files as the chunk content. And last, uh, you, we have introduced a few uh, new engines in Knitter. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much and happy knitting.